they've got the old Avon inflatable here hasn't been used in years it's got to be 30 years old at least and it hasn't been used in the last oh, 18 20 years perhaps it's just been folded up and uh, stored in various places under cover and also outside I've just hauled it out the bushes which is just overgrown forgot it was there to be honest but anyway had nothing better to do this afternoon so amazingly other than the dirt and the snails and slugs and everything else that's on it it looks in reasonable condition it doesn't look like it's uh, the sun's got to it and uh, well the only thing that inflates at the moment is the seat the valve up the front end this has only got two valves an aft and a forward one but it's got two chambers this particular valve has uh, sheared off the perished by the looks of it on the thread that holds the bottom part there's a there's a piece inside with the valve and the flapper that stops the air coming out and that is sheared off so that's loose inside of there so that's happened there that's a plate there and uh, so I thought oh well I'll have a go at pumping the uh, the aft end up but uh, started and as you can see in the middle there the uh, the plunger um, has fallen out and uh, it started rattling around in the pump and the spring <laughs> there's a spring there so that's all perished and the same the back of that has fallen off inside like the forward end really but the uh, the one for the seat uh, is working fine but as you can see it's the plastic is uh, is perishing really but uh, you know it's holding up it's been pumped up for 10 minutes or so so it, it all kind of looks the inside doesn't look any different to the outside you know in terms of UV and uh, like all these patches that's all still stuck on and uh, the yaw locks it's pretty much as it's as it was when it was put away So we'll see. I think maybe uh, get a because this is Hyperlon. Maybe get a Hyperlon repair package. See if I can get some replacement valves. Uh, and if so, we repair it. This type has got when it's inflated. It's got this bracket here for your little outboard. And uh, I had it for work. There's a little tender to get into boats afloat and things like that. Still got a, an absolute ancient old phone number on there. 30 plus years old. So, yeah, isn't that amazing. So we'll see, yeah, here's the pump. Hasn't got the original pipe, but the bellows still sound. All those uh, staples haven't rusted off yet. And it works, sucks and blows. Yeah, oh well. Right. I'm going to try and give it a clean as it is. I was hoping to pump it up and clean it. But that's not going to happen now. So I might just give it a quick pressure wash, get the worst off, get it in a workshop, drying off, and uh, see if I can get those valves ordered. If they still make them, or, so, or something very similar. Right, we'll just leave that to dry off now. Contact a few suppliers in the meantime, see if we can get some Hyperlon repair kits, uh, but mainly the, uh, the valves. 
or something very similar that we can replace. So first job to get the valve out is to unscrew this nut here and you'll, be, uh, you'll end up with that thread showing through and the body of this inside the tube. So I've already taken the, uh, the base out of the, this forward valve, that's the, the broken piece there, but you can see how large it is compared to the hole. Um, now every rib's different and of course this is a, an old style rib but uh, it'd be very similar, I'd imagine, in most other cases. But it's got this uh, patch that's bonded on there. And then you've got a hole in the tube. And this one also has a very thick backing patch glued on in the inside. Now, sometimes you'll see that these, these patches um, cover a much larger, much larger hole in the tube so that you can replace these uh, and what you would do you take the top and the inside patch off you've got a big hole put your fitting in replace the two patches and then put the fitting the new fitting back up through the hole i'm cheating a little bit here um, a this is an old it's old uh, inflatable it's low pressure and you can probably see here hopefully that i've just put four little slits in just the edge of this circle in the hole so I could get that out and also or more importantly get this one in because as you can see we've got the thread and everything here so that's got to get in there the reason why I did that in this case uh, is it hasn't got a hole cut in the tube the body of the tube uh, it's just got this really thick um, backing pad and everything in there and I just didn't really want to disturb it uh, and spend all that time and effort so I've cheated a bit and I've kept these splits to the very minimum so that when we come back over with the washer here that was the backing nut that goes over that thread it's going to cover those splits bear in mind also this is going to get glued back on and then I can put glue in there and everything so I reckon that's all going to be airtight especially on this sort of low pressure type of hull um, and that can all go back that's the original piece I'm not going to replace it with a new one I'm, I'm just going to clean that up and bond that back on that's great So I've peeled off the outside pads, taken the old valves out, put the new valves in. I've also then cut a piece of plastic just to put in there uh, to stop any glue seeping into there when I come to glue this back on, this patch, um, so we don't end up with a gluey, sticky mess. 
So the next job now is to prep these areas. So I've got the old patch and uh, obviously the tube. So it's a case of getting the old glue off, clean with a bit of solvent and then glue that back on there like that. So that's on the board here. So behind there, I've got a nice flat surface because it's going to be important uh, to get as much pressure on here to expel any air and get a good glue joint. So that's okay there. I can just about do the same here. Well, a little bit awkward. But at the stern here, because of the shape and so much fabric everywhere, what I've done, I've just clamped a bit of, just clamped a piece of ply on the back there. So that's all free so that I can, I've got something to press and push against later on. So I'm just going to clean these areas up now with some sandpaper. If I was trying to be super careful um, and it wasn't such an old rib, uh, you'd probably want to tape up masking tape around here to stop you scratching the tube and also later on with any excess glue that oozes out it will go onto the tape. But we can clear the excess up with the, the solvent um, cleaner as well. But uh, otherwise you'll end up in time with a brown, um, a brown glue stain. Right, get sanding. So the valve patches and the areas around the holes are all prepped now so they've been sanded, sanded the glue off, the old glue and then uh, hoovered them up and then with the solvent cleaned off any of the fine dust and things like that. That solvent all can also remove some of the excess glue as well. It's powerful stuff so you need plenty of ventilation and also hand protection. So we're going to mix up a bit of glue now, coat all those parts and then we'll leave that for a good half an hour.
so that's the valve replaced so just glued the uh, the patch on and uh, I've also fitted the uh, the valve just uh, as tight as I can get by hand just uh, while the rest of that cures it's going to be uh, 24 hours or so before I want to inflate it and I think it's pretty much a, a week or so before this glue gets fully uh, sort of serviceable in that sense but uh, after 24 hours should be good to inflate so back is as was three new valves just got to wait now to see if that all holds up
So obviously it's still wet, hasn't fully dried yet, but it looks a uh, million dollars compared to not giving it a good old scrub and a clean. It's taken a lot of the stains off and other dirt and grime. With an older inflatable like this, using a really soapy water, um, it has one advantage in, in as much as finding any leaks. Fortunately, just going around this now, I uh, haven't got any other than this one here, which uh, you can see there was an old patch that uh, when I was scrubbing it, the, uh, the patch came off, so it obviously needs redoing. But you can see there's a little skag there and doesn't look like it's uh, leaking. But a little bit of soapy water that goes over it, just like repairing the old bicycle tires, you'll see that that now blows a, blows a bubble there. And uh, if you get the water and uh, there you go, you can see that quite clearly blowing there. So that's obviously definitely a leak, albeit a very small one. But uh, yeah, that needs repairing. So I'll just redo that patch. So next job is to clean these up a bit. Obviously I did these uh, 30 plus years ago and uh, obviously was in a bit of a rush. It's not that great, is it? I think I'm just gonna paint over them uh, just black. So we just have some black panels. Now I've found on the, uh, on the other ones that I've done already that underneath here uh, is some old lettering. I'm surprised I didn't take that off before. I've just painted over it with the black. But that is starting to come off now, the old letters, and I think they're probably stuck on. So I'm gonna to have to sand those off. I'm not using a hot air gun or anything like that. You know, that would obviously soften the, this rubberized paint, but you're also softening the, uh, the hyplon, and you don't know what's underneath there. And the last thing you wanna do is introduce any heat and um, muck up uh, any glue joints. So I'm just gently sanding this back uh, to a nice smooth finish. So just like on this one here, you can just see the, uh, the white of the letters I'd painted on. This is the black I'd also painted on and underneath all that again was the older letters, um, which were stuck directly to a clean tube. As you can see here, quite clearly see these letters. But as they were starting to peel off, uh, I had to take those off anyway, so there you go. So it's just a, a careful uh, sand, uh, braid that back, um, get any of the bubbles and things like that off those old letters, and then we'll be able to paint that again now. Right, so that's all sanded off, nice and flush. All there and the aft end as well. So we're just gonna, just need to clean all this up now. Got a good old hoover up and a wipe down, masking tape all round and then a coat of black on there now. Right, so just make sure you take your tape off while it's still wet. 
gives you the opportunity to uh, clear up any drips and dribbles if there are any and also you won't get any bleed from underneath the tape then. So here we are now in its all full glory, the Avon Red Crest. It's nine foot and a bit long, four foot and a bit wide. This is pretty much its standard configuration. It's uh, on the serial number 1979. We're now 2020. 40 odd years old isn't it so that's not too bad I think come up very well good old clean new valves we did some of the old repairs painted over some of the old sign writing cleaned up the outboard bracket I was going to say good as new well nothing after 40 years is as good as new but it's pretty much Sorted, I would say. Live to fight another day. Well worth the effort. Now I've got a serviceable uh, tender now. Perhaps you can do the same. Minimal materials, just a bit of time and effort.